Welcome to a brand new tutorial with me. It has been a while and um, I have promised two tutorials for a couple of months now and I just didn't have the time but now I'm here and I'm going to show you the first. Um, the first tutorial I promised to do was um, background removal without losing all of the detail in the hair. I have shown this before but it was only a small part of a tutorial, so <coughs> sorry. This one is completely dedicated to removing backgrounds. Um, there are two different backgrounds that I'm dealing with. The first one is the uni color background here in white and here in blue, and the other one is a background that is not just one color. So, first we start with the easy one. This is going to work with um, the channels and a mask. So let us just start with that. Let me zoom this in here. And I'm adding a mask first because, as you know, I almost never use the eraser because I like to be able to go back and fix things. Um, so this is the non-destructive way. So the first thing we are going to do is we look here in the channels right next to layers and find the one with the bigger contrast. So um, RGB is the whole color thing. Now we have red channel that is all the red colors, green is all the green colors and blue is all the blue colors. So um, I think we can agree that blue is the one with the higher contrast. So we take this and copy it. I do this by dragging it down here to the layer icon and then we have a new layer. The first thing we do now is we go to image adjustments and then levels and we are going to play around with this here until the grays in the hair are black and then we crank up uh, down the white for the background to make sure that it's really really white and go back to this to make sure that all the gray parts in the hair will be black but that the edges are not too harsh so this is okay um, as you can see the parts between the hairs here stay white a couple here are gray that you can fix later by hand. That's um, The face and body doesn't matter because all we want to do is have the details of the hair. The body is easy to fix and cut out or put back in. So after this we click OK. Then we hold the control key and click on this layer to make this selection. Afterwards we go into the layer masks here. Then we could of course fill this with the bucket but I don't want to do that I just want to go around the body and not fix all of the body stuff. Take a soft brush here and then with the black color go in and remove all these parts around in the hair. As you can see there are a couple of parts that we don't get but we can fix that by doing this whole thing again and focusing on these parts that are still there. So circle around this. The rest you can just remove by hand, it doesn't matter. We go bim bam and fix that later. So I'm putting in a background image to show you how much we have removed yet. There. As you can see there is a couple of green uh, not green grey spots here and there in between. And we are going in there now. We go back to the channels. This was this one we're going to delete that and 
take another copy of the blue one. Now, now we are going to focus on the parts in between. So we go again to Image, Adjustments and Levels. Make sure the hair is black. And this time it's going to be a bit harsher here because we only take a couple of parts. So this is yes. Click on that. Now we are going back to the mask and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more with a smaller brush. As you can see here, now the grey parts are better available. The parts of the hair that we are deleting right now we are going to fix with a white brush when we are done here. All we want to do right now is to get the background out of the hair. A bit there, a bit there. Make sure you only delete the background, not like inside the hair, these little parts. Though if you do that you can fix it later. So, let me see. might delete a couple of strands of hair, but that is fine. Most of the detail though you keep when you do that. Okay. It is okay if the hair is a little halo, we are going to fix that in a moment. is making my computer a little bit stuttery, so um, the other way around. So this should be fine for now. There's one more piece here. So what we're going to do now is fit this to screen again. Okay, so now the rest of the white background we just grab a brush. I take a hard brush here and delete this there so it doesn't distract us. Um, spacing was off. It's better that it's smooth. All right. As I said, you can fix the body again by just changing to white and draw the shoulders back in here. But we don't need that really right now. Okay. Now that we have this hair, it, it looks good already. As I promised you, we are going to fix the body again. The parts where you see here that the body is missing, you go in with a white brush. White is the show, black is the hide. So we just go back in here and fix this. Take the black brush and go in here to fix all this nice stuff. That is something you can do when you delete parts of the body that you didn't want to delete. Same goes for hair, where you just go in with a smaller brush and, oh, that was the black brush, see that happens, uh, when you go in with white and just get that 
back if you want to. So, as I said, we have a couple of parts that we're missing here. We just go in with a really small brush and delete them by hand. As said, you can have this light halo because we are going in with the clone tool in a moment and fix that. That way we will get rid of the halo and fix all these things that look kind of odd right now. So let me show you that. You make a new layer. As you know by now, hopefully, if you have seen the other videos, if not, you learn it now, you can make a clipping mask. Clipping mask means that the layer you draw on only shows on the parts that are on the layer below. So, for example, I have a new layer here. I press Alt and go between these layers to make a clipping mask. You can go right click and create clipping clipping mask it automatically makes the clipping mask for the layer below so if you notice that nothing happens as it should be check if you have maybe the wrong layer as a clipping layer so what we do then sometimes people um, are going to use just a simple brush and a color but I want to make sure that the color of the hair fits perfectly with um, the new cover-up. So we are going to use the clone stamp tool here. This is the clone stamp tool. We make the brush soft for blending and smaller. Uh, even smaller like that. Uh, that should be okay. And then for sampling a piece of the hair we press Alt and click and then we go a bit below and draw over th these edges. Now let me take a bigger part so you can see it even better. We sample here, move a little and go along the edge. Sample move along the edge, sample, move along the edge. That way you can cover the halos. Um, now you have something like this here and there is absolutely nothing around this that would work. So I'm going to take regular hair from up here. This might be a little bit red for the area but it's a natural hair so it should still work. There we go. Clone stamp here. Clone stamp here. This way is also um, a good way to fix the regions that you possibly didn't get with this method because no method is perfect. So and this is something you could do all around the whole head now. It might take a while, but it definitely works and will lead to you not having to give up all this gorgeous detail of the hair by simply removing it with the background. So. So I'm going to pause this right now and show you the finished result in a moment. And here we are. Now this is not perfect, but if you put her into a picture now, um, the hair won't have this halo anymore. So let's just put in a layer here to show you. For example, 
example, Ivy Leaves, whatever. Now you see that you don't have this halo anymore. When you do this, you can still see it, and it looks out like a cutout. But if you have all this white halo stuff covered, this looks much more like an actual person on front or on this ivy layer. You have to add some, some shadows and everything. But this is how to cut out hair from a white background. Now, the same method I'm using for different colored background like this. You add the thing here, we use the highest contrast. Now this is bad contrast because the hair and the background are both black. You have to find one that is high background like this here. This is like high contrast. Again blue. What are the chances? You go to adjustment layers, uh, levels and make the hair black again, the background white. Sometimes it has to be a bit harsh but this for example should work. So, control and click on the thumbnail and the channels make the selection here. You go on the mask, take the black soft brush, <coughs> a bit bigger of course, and then you go in here. Okay, this is a hard brush I think, but it's okay too. And delete the stuff around the hair. Might go in a second time here. There. And now what we have is a lot of blue halo, pretty much. Um, let me make this a black one to show you. There. Now you have blue halo here. The, you do the same thing as you did before, you go in, make this clipping mask here, take the stamp tool, can make it a bit bigger maybe, you grab sample here and you go over this and with that give her the natural hair color she has already in those fine wisps and I'm not going to do the whole head now because we did this in the other picture, but I'm showing you a section of it. When hairs are going in the other direction, I take parts from the top. So, like this. Take a bit from, oops. There we go. Take a bit from the top here go back to what's closest. So that way the blue halo that you can see really, 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 really well here goes away and you still have all these nice details here Oops. that you can carry on into your picture once you're done. So easy as that. Now if we... I'm going to save these here. Who knows, maybe I need them somewhere. Now if you go into something like this, this is a whole lot different because if you go into the channels and take a look here, there is not much of a possibility to make all of this black and your hair not, or the other way around. That's um, close to impossible. You can try it bit by bit, but it might take a lot of work and time. Um, in cases like these, I do a smooth cutout and fill in with hairbrushes. Now, easy said than done. So, I'm going to show you at least for a bit. Um, let me do leaves a really rough selection here. I'm going to fine tune that with another brush. Okay, we delete the background here. This is basically
rising was off again, it was choppy. <laughs> so I'm going in for the top. I'm taking a regular hard brush, just going along the edge here. If I want to delete the top, for example, for a uniform shirt or something, I'm going in and delete all the stuff around the hair. Let me do it actually. Um, if there is no chance that I might be able to rescue this hair stuff, I just go in really close and delete strands and everything. So I have high hopes that I can salvage the strands here. And we'll have to go in with another brush there too. Same goes here. Let's just delete this because she will get a uniform. Well, not in this tutorial, but generally when I make pictures like this, people go into uniforms. So, okay. When we go in uniform mode, it's usually cutting here until um, up to the neckline here. So I'm going to do this right now. And this is one of the reasons why you want to use these um, masks, because sometimes the layer, um, the uniform collar goes higher, sometimes it goes lower, depending on the picture you're going to use. So you want to be able to get that net back if you cut too much of it. So if you use an eraser you can't do that, you would have to make the do the picture all over again if your neck deleting is too many steps back because the undo function isn't unlimited. Um, if you use the mask you can just change the brush to white and get it back. So get used to using the mask because that is really really helpful. Now, when we go closer around this hair here, we want to use a soft brush to make it look more natural. So I'm using a soft brush. Yeah, okay. Then back to black. And I'm going to cut all around here. Um, I'm showing you a trick later how you can get rid of all the soft edge residue that will remain when you work with soft brushes as one of the disadvantages of soft brushes. So we're going all around the clearly defined hairline here. bit cut off up there. If you can make the picture work with that, it's fine. I'll, um, if you can't, just um, add a bit of canvas up here and reconstruct this little bit that you might need. But right now we don't need that. Um, we go around here, take this background stuff with us, because we are like this. And as you can see, you get this really nice, soft edge around the hair here. That will make it uh, blend nicely with a new background when you do that. If you do the edge too sharp, it looks like a cutout, so that is why I'm going to do this. This is all this wispy stuff that I can't salvage, so I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to try to go around here. And now onto this white shirt stuff that we can hopefully remove. Okay, this one. Like this. the brush a bit smaller for this here. 
It looks a bit weird right now, but we are going to change that in a moment. Okay. There. Same we were going to do here. Make the brush a bit bigger and go nicely around these here. If a bit of sh uh, skin shines through, you can brush that over later. So don't fret about that. With brushing over, I mean this whole hairbrush thing. put this on a uniform head if you want to. Um, here's a bit more of this green background. I w don't want to delete this here, so I'm going in and, as in the other pictures, grab a sample here and fill this with her natural hair color. Maybe from over here a bit, so it doesn't look too repetitive. And there we go. Filled. Um, now you have these edge, uh, hard edged strands here, and one thing that I do is that I'm using a lot of hairbrushes. Um, I can't tell you where all these hairbrushes come from that I use, but check on deviant.com. Um, they have a lot of brushes that you can use, and some of them are also hairbrushes, so just try them out. What I'm doing is I grab hair brushes that I have installed here. For example, let me grab this one. And then I'm holding Alt to take a sample of the color. And I go in and click this a couple of times. Then another color, f and a brighter color. And then a bit of a darker color to make this all a bit more natural. So we have different shades in this. And I go on until I'm happy with that. Then I control T for transform and I'm going to rotate this a little, move it around. I might delete parts of it because they don't work well, for example at the top here I'm trying to blend this in a bit more and then I see that this is not the right saturation. So I'm going into adjustments, hue saturation, and try to adjust this to the color of the hair a bit more. Might move it a little bit again. And it might not blend perfectly, but this is something that I do. Um, now and then I don't use all the brushes and sometimes I mix several brushes to have a little bit of a more natural effect. This is a brush that doesn't work with this style. This neither. Let me try this for something. This could be working on the on this part here. So I have a new layer here. Take a bit of color again. I make this strand here because I'm going to rotate it around. There, Control T again, rotating it to lay it over this little strand here. this 
works actually really nice. So, um, if you combine this, try around the whole color picking and overlaying of these parts here. You can add some wisps that you had to delete with your regular brush, um, re erasing earlier the, with the masking, that you just can't get back, for example. If you are proficient with drawing, you can of course just draw them in. I am not. <laughs> so that is what I use. Now if we add a background layer here of a different color, you can see that there are wisps again. And you can do that all over the hair. You don't have them to do like this. You can totally erase the parts that don't work here. Use different brushes or anything. Now what I wanted to show you was to get rid of these fragments here because they are really ugly and they are leftovers from the soft brush. And there's one thing that I use that is heaven sent with that. You go into right click and blending options of the layer with the face and all the cutouts here. And then you go into stroke and just activate it and press OK. And then you can see all these black bits around the parts that you haven't deleted. Then you grab a hard edge brush and oh sorry. Then you go into mask here and just mask them out there. I am not sure why the black is showing it, but well, let's do this. We go into the brush properties and set the spacing down for smoother work. And then we go in here loosely around the edges so you don't get the hard edge for the hair. But you can delete all these fragments here. So that way you don't get all this residue in your picture and have to figure out where it is, where it's coming from, how to get rid of it, all this stuff. And now my Photoshop has uh, frozen. Okay, here's this again. The recording makes my Photoshop really, really choppy, but that's okay. I go through that for you. Now let's go around this. As said, remember not to get too close to the hair, so you don't get a hard edge. But don't go too far away to this whole mess. So. Fit screen. Okay, you see how it's going. I don't really have to do the old picture because I don't use it for anything. But this is how you can. This is a brush. <laughs> this was a different brush. Um back make smaller there we go. So yeah, you just do this and everything will be fine. And um this is how I get rid of hair. I mean background when I need to have the hair separated from the background. Sometimes I'm lucky and someone uh, wants a picture with the exact same background that is already on the picture and sometimes it works well um, for a uniformed person or civvies. 
and then we don't have to remove all this background stuff. But just in case you have to, these are the methods that I use to do that. And I have no idea why I keep doing this, because as I said, I don't need this picture. But I guess it's a habit to finish what I start. <laughs> and I hope that this helped you to figure out how to do this. And as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to disable the stroke again, of course. So let me do this real quick. So go to fit screen. There we go. This works. Now what we can do is go into effects and just disable stroke again. And with that we can work. We have a couple of parts here that we might have to fix, but we can, as said, either fix it or just go over it with brushes and see what we can do. And that's how you do hair. <laughs> so until next time, I hope this was helpful and you can work with it. And we'll see when I can find the time to do the other requested video. The video that has been requested is to do a Meng. I'm pretty sure that was the name. It's a species in Star Trek and how to do a correct picture with a Meng face. And um, this is what I'll do next. Until then, have lots of fun and stay creative. Bye bye.